Hello all and welcome to Wake Up With Marcy. It's time to heal, transform, and be inspired. We are here at Favalli's Trattoria in Ramsey, New Jersey, sharing a cup of coffee with Eric and Emily Orton. We all speak about dreams, getting married, starting a career, traveling, but to uproot your family, give up everything, and start a new life on a sailboat is a dream that very few would make happen. We will hear how this brave family made it happen and how it has transformed their lives. Eric, Emily, thank you so much for coming on Wake Up. Thank you for having us. We're happy to be here with you. So you have quite a story. I mean, first of all, five years ago, you're living in Manhattan, you have five children, you're working, and you decide you're going to take a journey. So whose decision was that? This was Eric's big idea. Yeah? Yeah, I'll, I'll own that one. Yeah. I think it started out incrementally. It was, it was something that grew over time. I was working downtown in the financial district. I had a job that, I, that wasn't very satisfying. I mm. had, a, I'd had a business set back and just took something to pay the bills. And so I was working essentially nights down at the World Financial Center and would just take walks along the river in the evening during my break. And I'd see these sailboats going up and down and it just looked peaceful and soothing. And I had a lot of stress in my life at the time and and I wanted something different. Mm -hmm. I wasn't a sailor, I didn't grow up sailing and it felt like sailing was somehow for other people. Mm -hmm. It wasn't part of something that we just felt we could do. Yet there was this sailing school right downstairs and I kind of eyed it for a while and Emily was like, you should go check it out. Yeah. And I kind of got up the guts to just step into a world that I didn't know anything about mm -hmm. and I asked, I'm interested in sailing, how does this work? They were super welcoming and friendly, right. and they said, you know, you can do a class, And but it, my schedule was weird, so they said, you know, if you can get three other people to join you, we'll create a custom class just for you. Mm. I couldn't find anybody to join me, and so at that point I said, hey, Emily, what if you and our two oldest girls, who were young, they were 9 and 11 at the time, uh -huh. what if we did this as a family? So we started taking sailing lessons, and we passed that class, and then we decided to go out and try it on our own, sail as a family. Because that was right. as big as the dream got, was just to go as a family on a boat one time. Right, and Emily, what was that like supporting that dream? Wow, I was super excited for Eric to do this thing. He worked so hard to take care of us, but um, I didn't really want to be on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, but I came around. That's what you do for the people that you love, right? You right. try to figure out how to support them. And the kids were really excited, and I'm all about learning and having those new experiences. I was just really scared of water. And Eric assured me, we're not gonna go in deep water, you're gonna stay on the boat. Right. Like the boat will be in deep water, but you will not be in water. Well, that's true, that's <laughs> so, true, right? You gotta sell it, right? Yeah, absolutely. So we went together and then um, I think that first family sail was very discouraging. I was trying to be like, hey, Upbeat, we can do I'm this, in. come on, <laughs> yeah. family. But I had um, a baby who couldn't sit up by herself yet, and I had a toddler who was Amazing. screaming, and a little six-year-old who just every time we tipped would get nervous, and mm -hmm. all the other boaters were actually pointing at us and laughing, and um, we were a mess. there was judgment on the water. We, what? Lots, lots of judgment. <laughs> lots of judgment. It, it wasn't. It wasn't an auspicious beginning, I guess I would say, and and. Uh, but after that, we started seeing these other families, and we were just on little 23-foot boats with no motor. Mm -hmm. and we started seeing these families out on these 40 or 50-foot boats living aboard with the kitchens and online. Where were you like, seeing online. That? Yeah, and we were oh, seeing online. It like, yeah, we, we found families blogs. on YouTube and on blogs, and they had something really special mm -hmm. um, that I seemed kind of intangible. This connection that they had to each other and. Yeah. That's for me, I think, where the dream, the vision started to kind of transfer. And Eric said I, that he thought maybe just our family on a boat would be enough universe for him. And I mean, there were so many wow. things to worry about. Yes. And those all came to my mind first. But thankfully, I didn't just yeah. spout out all my worries because I think that could have suffocated the idea and caused right. a lot of frustration. Instead, I just, well, when would you want to go? And 
Um, so now suddenly this sort of amorphous dream had, I want to live on a sailboat as a family for a year and we want to go before our oldest child goes to college. So now it had a deadline on it. And that starts to be the making right. of. So you're molding uh, this. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You're making this dream more tangible. Yeah. And, but let's talk about the fear. All right. Sure. So <laughs> was there a lot of fear? Or did you feel like I'm in and, and I'm going for this? I had a lot of fear. Mm -hmm. I had a lot of fear of how could we, how, you know, if we do this, it means leaving work behind because yeah. uh, we didn't know how to make money while living on a sailboat. Mm -hmm. So it was quitting our job, my job. Uh, you know, we had five kids and they were young. We wanted to keep them safe. Right. Uh, but I think, ironically, the thing that we were most scared about, at least I was, was failure. Yeah. I was worried about embarrassing myself in front of my friends and family who would see us doing something that on the surface might look irresponsible mm -hmm. and then it bombing right and then you just you just look dumb and I think that was for me the hardest thing to overcome and but we decided that if we go broke or if you know there's some kind of accident and something happens you know or worst of all if we fail and are embarrassed would we still be glad that we did this and we decided that yes, we would. Mm -hmm. And so we decided to go for it. Wow, that's great. I really think that anything in life, it's interesting that you are afraid of failure and you know, potentially things may not go right. And you, it's that courage that you find inside to actually make your dream come true. And you did that because you are taking risk in anything that you do. And this is something huge that you thought in the beginning, I don't think I could do that. And most people would, would look at that and say, that's not something I would do, but you did it. You did it. So let's talk about what it was like. So I know that there were, it was about two years in the making before you actually went out on the boat. Yeah, between when we articulated the goal and we actually left. Right. Yeah, things sort of sped up from there as far as um, one of my fears was just not having the right skill set. We took um, more classes and we went out with our kids. We started going with the kids on the little sailboats like three, four times a month, mm -hmm. everyone practicing, you know, drills and things like yeah. that. And then we ultimately figured it might be wise if they had a chance to sleep overnight on the water. Mm -hmm. And so we made that happen in Florida. And I was kind of manipulating it because I brought like all their favorite foods along to make sure that it would be the best experience right? possible. Of course, Brownies, of hot course. dogs, mac and cheese. <laughs> They loved it. Any child I, would want to do that. Right. Yeah, let's live on a boat. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, that was part of it. And then there was just the trade-offs of saying, you know, this is where we're investing our time and our energy and our resources, which meant other things maybe didn't happen, maybe plays or um, classes they might want to take right. or, you know, we could put off So there braces. were sacrifices yeah. and for such. Sure. But as a mom, that must have been very fearful for you. I was worried about safety, mm -hmm. as particularly with our youngest, who uh, she has Down syndrome. So she was six when we left, and she always has kind of skewed a little younger mm -hmm. in her, her, you know, impulse control and things like that. So right. um, I was very nervous about taking her on the boat, and so we just looked up a lot of the different safety precautions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I always had her in the cabin right across from me, and I kept her door locked so that. If she was awake, I was awake, right. and we right. would <laughs> be able to keep an eye on her. I think for us, one of the turning points was we were afraid of all these things that Emily's talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then we said, well, what's the flip side of this? What, would, what are the good things that would not happen if we don't go? Yeah. And we started to, in a way, become afraid of the things that we might miss out on, which That's is cool. the other part of it. That's wonderful to look at it that way. And we said, you know, we like what we have, but would we be willing to lose this in exchange for what we could get? Mm -hmm. Right. And the pull of that overcame the fear of losing what we had. And we said, you know, we have all these reasons why going seems scary and dangerous. Mm -hmm. But on the one hand, our kids might feel like a liability to doing something like this. But also, we decided that they should probably be our reason for going. Right. That if right. we want to show our kids the world, we want to show them how to live life, show them how to take risks. And so, in a way, we kind of did it for them. Yeah. And we became 
less afraid of what might happen to us and more excited about what we would gaining what we thought we might miss right. on if we didn't go. Right. And I would say particularly for this little girl, our youngest daughter, um, because it's easier for her to understand the world in concrete terms mm -hmm. instead of abstract explanations like, oh, there's this other place or these other animals. Um, it was actually ideal for her to go out in person, see the world with mm. her own eyes. Absolutely. And, she and grew so, from that. Absolutely, she did. And yeah. she got to um, be curious in every new environment, and that propelled so much growth for her. her. She was very happy. Yeah. So that was a trade-off. I was worried right. about her safety, mm -hmm. but it traded off to be just I amazing like, for her growth. I like how you flipped things around. Yes, I'm afraid, but what am I going to miss? I'm going to be afraid to miss this. Yeah. And I think so often it's so hard for us to do that. We just get, you know, caught in the minutia of, oh my God, these terrible things could happen. But what are the wonderful things that could happen? What could go right? That's yeah. what we started to ask ourselves. What could go right? And what are the risks of not going? Yeah. And once we started to factor those in, the scales pretty easily tipped towards going. Well, when we come back, we will learn more about facing your fears, getting over your anxiety, and going after that dream. He started to develop some mental illnesses, mm -hmm. um, mainly social anxiety and depression, uh, which is was so out of the blue for Dylan. It's so important to tell your story and where you are today and the difference that you're making. Break the stigmas associated with mental illness and addiction. You had some struggles at that time. I certainly did. Like most women and men going through divorce, it was a really trying time. Well, you found the strength. It, it was really God's plan for me. I've always been a very deeply spiritual person. Well, for me, the physical abuse started when I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I knew him half my life. Yeah. Yes, once you start sharing your truth, it, there's the healing that happens through that. And it's like you can't stop talking about it. But you're yeah. rebuilding your soul yes. right now. And you're doing that through your art and your creativity. Watch Wake Up With Marcy every Saturday at 6 a.m. on WLNY 1055. Welcome back to Wake Up With Marcy. So let's talk about these fears and anxieties and how can we get over those? How do we overcome those? Wow, we like to talk about this fear equation and it's kind of what Eric was saying earlier, where the pull for the thing, the uncertain thing that you're looking forward to becomes stronger than that mm -hmm. drag for what you don't want to let go of. Mm -hmm. That's sort of the tipping point. Um, for me personally, though, there were a couple of times that I really experienced some fear. I'll just tell you the first time we went snorkeling, I wasn't planning on going in. I actually felt a little embarrassed because I knew my fears were irrational and all the other grown-ups had gone in. Um, and I finally jumped in the water with my mask, my first time trying this. And I just sang myself some little songs that I learned in Sunday school as like to kind of encourage Isn't me. That nice? Until I got, yeah. I know, it's true. That is really, that's one of the ways that I get through my little yeah. fears. And um, by the time I got over to the reef where the fish were, I was so enchanted by this new world that I had never experienced in person before. It completely, consumed all of that fear with fascination mm -hmm. and uh, Eric came to check on me how are you doing and that's I said, amazing this is my new favorite thing I had no idea this was all these years waiting on the other side of what I was afraid of and that experience actually helped me with a lot of other fears to say who knows right precedent says through that there could be something amazing on the other side of this fear yeah so that helped a lot how about for you Eric in our family, we like to do this thing that we call scouting it out, where we'll do things incrementally. We'll take a small risk that we know we can retreat from. We sort of expand our comfort zone and then we build out from there. So we started out sailing small boats, mm -hmm. half a day. Then Emily and I went to take a class in the Caribbean for a week where we had an instructor. Mm -hmm. That was easy to retreat from, but we expanded our comfort zone. 
Then we decided to charter a boat where we went out for a week where I was the captain and we shared that time with some friends. And then we said, okay, let's go with kids. And then we added the kids and we went out for a few days. And so each time it was something that was pushing yeah. ourselves, but not too far. Right. And then we would always come back to where we were comfortable, regroup, uh -huh. get up our courage again and go further out. And so when, it, when we actually, when we were in the Bahamas, or anytime we went to a new island, we said, we're going to go to shore and we're just going to scout it out. We're going to take out the fear of spending money and making decisions. We're just going to go and walk around the island and see mm -hmm. what's there. Mm -hmm. And the only thing that we would take with us in those situations where we would bring spoons, because if we came across ice cream, that was a risk we would take anytime. We would always <laughs> buy ice cream, but, but that was the only risk we would take on our first pass. Everything else, we would just learn, gather information, come home and in the privacy of our boat or our, yeah. in often cases our home, we would just say, okay, now that we know more, now do, what do we want to do? And we wouldn't try to do it all at once. Right. Just go very slow, step because by step. Because in anything, it's so overwhelming if you try to do it all at once. Yeah. You've got to take it in those little bite-sized pieces. And I like how you said, it's like you're venturing out a little bit and then you retreat. Re and so rest. You, and just keep, keep taking on a little bit more each time. Exactly. Yeah. So how about the children? What are the, the lessons that they've learned from this? Oh, wow. Well, I love this one. Our son, who was eight years old at the time he went on the boat, he learned that there is such a thing as no internet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he That's was, a big one. He was Rude born the, the same year as YouTube, and that was a big one for him. I didn't yeah. realize. He didn't know that, that that existed in the world. So that was a good lesson. Um, he our, also learned to swim. He learned to swim. Yeah. yeah, he learned to make friends. He was one who helped reach out and make some of the friends we made. Um, the older girls were a little more reflective about mm -hmm. their experience. And uh, one of our daughters said she learned to be comfortable being uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I That's think wonderful. coming from this scouting idea. Yeah. And um, the oldest one, Karina, she said, I don't feel like this trip changed me, but it helped me become more myself. Wow. Take the time to get to know yourself. Yeah. And I, and I feel like that was true for all, of, for all of us. So how about the people that you met? We met a lot of wonderful people. Mm -hmm. um, people are good and kind everywhere, mm -hmm. despite what the media tries to tell us. So we learned that. Uh, we prepared for a lot of things for this journey. Our skills, safety, um, route planning, the one thing that I did not prepare for was meeting and making fantastic friends because we made lifelong friends, mm -hmm. uh, all kinds of, you know, retired couples, pe people traveling solo. I think the ones that stand out the most are other families that had kids that were living on boats. And we ended up traveling with two other boats for several months. Wow. And we had six adults, I think, what was it, 12 kids between us two dogs and a cat. So we were a little bit of a caravan and we would just sail to a, an anchorage, uh, drop anchor our three boats. We were kind of like the three musketeers and the kids would swim back and forth between boats. The moms would go on grocery trips together and team up on mom things. And me as a dad, I made great friends too, which oftentimes in my land life, I'm so busy that I don't have time for that. And a people. lot of dads don't either. Yeah. And, um, my buddy John, one day we were over on the boat and he was helping me troubleshoot a fuel line issue. Mm -hmm. And to make sure it was clear, he put the hose in his mouth and sucked until he had diesel in his mouth. Uh -huh. And Emily came back to see, and I was telling her this story. And so we always joke now that that's a high bar for a friendship. That's a, that's is, like, will, your friend, friend. will your friend right. suck diesel for you? Exactly, yeah. exactly. So it's incredible, the, the community that you created for yourself. And, you know, just the idea that People are out there, they're willing to help and connect, connect no matter where you are. Yeah. So when we come back, we will hear about their book, Seven at Sea. started to develop some mental illnesses, mm -hmm. um, mainly social anxiety and depression, uh, which is was so out of the blue for Dylan. It's so important to tell your story and where you are today and the difference that you're making. Break the stigmas associated with mental illness and addiction. You had some struggles at that time. I certainly did. Like 
most women and men going through divorce. It was a really trying time. Well, you found the strength. It, it was really God's plan for me. I've always been a very deeply spiritual person. Well, for me, the physical abuse started when I was 16 years old. Mm -hmm. So at this point, I knew him half my life. Yeah. Yes, once you start sharing your truth, it, there's the healing that happens through that, and it's like you can't stop talking about it. But you're rebuilding your soul yes. right now, and you're doing that through your art and your creativity. Watch Wake Up With Marcy every Saturday at 6 a.m. on WLNY 1055. Welcome back to Wake Up With Marcy. So, Seven at Sea. Yeah. You wrote a book from your experience, and I'm excited to hear about this and what you want us to gain from your book. Well, we wrote this book together, alternating chapters, and I can't decide whether it was harder to live on the boat with our five kids for a year or whether it was harder to write this book together. I can't say that either. <laughs> I, I wouldn't know. <laughs> Both seem difficult. But just like the boat, the, writing the book was worth it. We learned a lot from it uh, ourselves and understanding the experience we had. And what we hope to share with others is encouragement in whatever kind of adventure they're taking in whatever area of their life they're trying to push into mm -hmm. an uncomfortable place. We're hoping that this book will show with humor and love um, how failure is a part of that and how we can overcome setbacks and how things can go right and people will want to help you and you'll get the information as you go. You don't have to know everything right, right before you start. And I hope that people will appreciate their families more. I hope they'll appreciate their life, that they, time they have here on earth and just feel encouraged to live more abundantly. Yeah, that's wonderful. So tell us what life is like today. For the Orton family? Yes. I think we came away from this changed. We, like Emily said, we're we're much more comfortable with uncertainty. We will begin things without having all the information. We now spend about half of each year traveling mm -hmm. for the most part. We mm -hmm. just came back from five months in Europe where we sailed with some of our friends that we met on mm -hmm. our time on our boat. Mm -hmm. um, we vanned our way across Europe and yeah. um, now we're headed to Hawaii to go house sitting for a couple of months. Amazing. And so we just, it's just opened us up to opportunities Absolutely. that we would not have considered before. And, and like Emily said, it it's, feels like a very abundant life. Yeah. So why don't you share with us one of your best and worst experiences on the boat and how did that help your family to grow? I think this is probably in some ways a best and a worst experience. When we were, we did our biggest crossing ever, which was from Puerto Rico to the Bahamas, and it was 500 miles. Mm. And we'd never done anything that long, and there were all kinds of variables. And it was this long, arduous five days that we talk about at length in the book. And when we got there, it was a high watermark for us as a family, as sailors, and it was dicey getting into this, this last anchorage. And as we sat on the beach, I just kind of looked back across the ocean and I said to Emily, I didn't think we'd ever make it this far. And she said, you didn't? <laughs> you didn't. <laughs> and just every step, <laughs> every step along the way, it was just, we were discovering more about what we were capable of. Mm -hmm. It was always hard to get to that new level, but always satisfying to look back and realize that we had done it. Yeah. Incredible. I think for me, some of the scary times were actual storms Mm -hmm. that we were in, mm -hmm. but maybe the most difficult. Earlier we talked about um, not having privacy and things like that. And I feel like at a certain point on our journey that led to um, some misunderstandings between us. Mm -hmm. And I felt like that was so difficult to try to sort through some misunderstandings in our most important relationships while we have no privacy and we have all these responsibilities and yeah. we're in the middle of beautiful nowhere yeah um and i think we came out of it because you just can't run away from any issues that you have and you just have yeah, to work through them. it together yeah. and so again a worst kind of became a best because i feel like it allowed us to level up in our communication with each other and in our just sort of mutual respect and and how we proceeded yeah. forward from there but that's it wasn't beautiful. yeah that's 
we could all learn from that because so it's so easy to run away yeah instead of learn that so what are some final thoughts for those out there that are on the brink of going after their dreams wow i'm so excited for people who have a dream have an interest a curiosity or something that resonates with them for people who have something like that that's a gift and it should be nourished mm -hmm. and encouraged and it doesn't have to be fast it can be incremental but i just really believe if people will strengthen those things and lean into who they really are and who they feel they're meant to be they're going to find that life is so much more satisfying when they're true to themselves and they share who they really are with the rest of us yeah. we all need your example yes absolutely i would say two things one Emily alluded to this earlier, let it emerge. Don't wait to have all the information before you start. You'll figure it out as you go, and mm -hmm. that's okay. And the other thing is, our editor, when he first read this book, he said, I don't want to live on a sailboat. This is, dream is not for everybody. Most people don't want to do this, but he said, reading your book made me feel like I have mountains that I want to climb in my own life, and reading your book helped those mountains feel closer. Mm -hmm. And so it's not about doing this thing, it's doing your thing, whatever it is, Believe in it and move towards it steadily with confidence and you can pull it off. That's awesome. Believe in yourself and make it happen. Absolutely. Thank you guys so much for coming on Wake Up, sharing your story, helping us to get over some of these obstacles and our fears and the courage to face them. Thank you. It's been our pleasure. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Well, I think it's time to make our dreams come true after that story. Thank you all for joining Wake Up With Marcy, and remember to check out wakeupwithmarcy.com for upcoming shows. Remember to be kind and be happy, and I'll see you next week.